we've all had those feelings of self-doubt, the feelings that are crippling often, that stop us from moving forward and living in our full potential. But I want you to know today that there is hope. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. My name is Shelby. This is the Dare Bold Believer channel, and we are all about pouring you up a big bold cup of Christ. Every single Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I am pouring you up a big bold cup of Christ. And for today's episode of our Faith Talk, we are going to be talking about overcoming self-doubt, and we are going to take a lesson from the bent over woman. So grab your Bible, grab your hot cup of coffee or tea, and let's chat. For today's scripture, we're going to look at Luke chapter 13, verses 10 to 17. And if you've been around here for a while, you know that we will be looking at the ESV translation. So let's hop right into it. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a disabling spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not fully straighten herself. When Jesus saw her, he came over and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your disability. And he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight. And she glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, said to the people, There are six days in which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord answered him, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 years, be loose from those bound on the Sabbath day? As he said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame. And all the people rejoiced at all the glorious things that were done by him. You may not be able to relate to being bent over for 18 years, but here's what we can take away from this woman who was suffering from a disabled spirit. Although you may not have a physical ailment, you are likely experiencing something spiritually or mentally that keeps you blocked and stops you from moving forward in the calling that God has for you. Much like you, God called me back to him, right? He, he calls all of us back to him. And some of us listen and take heed to that call and some of us ignore it. But if you've taken heed to that call, if you've chosen to, to follow and to cling to God, right? Because you heard that call and you felt it in your spirit and your soul that he was where you belonged, that he was that missing thing in your life, right? Um, if you've taken heed to that call, but you're still struggling to walk in the purpose, right? To walk in the assignment, to use the spiritual gifts that you have, to use all of those beautiful talents and skills that God created you specifically to have. If you're still struggling in those things, you are likely just like the bent over woman. Like I said, we may not be experiencing a physical ailment. But if we're not walking in our full potential, if we're not being the person who God created us to be, which means being true to who we are, right, then we are a bent over woman. We are suffering from a disabling spirit because God called us to walk boldly. He's calling us to be confident. He's calling us to walk fully in our purpose, to strain forward and to not be focused on our past mistakes, or failures, our past shortcomings. He wants us to walk fully and truly knowing that by the stripes that Christ suffered, by the blood of Christ that was shed on the cross, each and every one of us has been redeemed. He paid the price. The ransom has been paid. So we no longer have an excuse. We no longer have a reason to walk in shame and condemnation. God has set you free from that through the gift of Jesus Christ. So if you are still sitting in what happened yesterday and what happened in your childhood and you're allowing it to stop you from walking fully in your potential, I want this to be a reminder today that that is Satan, okay? God did not give you a spirit of fear. Second Timothy's one and seven says he has given you a sound mind. 
He's giving you self-control. So you are not to walk in a spirit of fear. You are to walk boldly and confidently knowing that you have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalms 139, 14, in case you're wondering. If you are feeling condemned, or if you are feeling like your past sin, or even something you fell short with recently after giving your life over to Christ, if you feel like that disqualifies you, if you feel like that stops you from being able to walk in the purpose, being able to use those gifts, being able to do the thing, the assignment that God has given you, that the Holy Spirit has spoken specifically to you about, I just want to remind you today that God has given you a spirit of hope. He is not giving you a spirit of shame or fear, but of hope. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope, Jeremiah 29, 11. And I can say all of these words boldly, confidently, and typically from the top of my head, because for so long I've held on to them physically um, with our verse cards. Our Who God Says You Are cards have helped me to remember what God says about me. That God says I'm loved. He says I'm redeemed. He says I'm victorious. He says I'm courageous. He says that he loves me, that I am a co-heir with Christ. And all of those beautiful promises, they don't just apply to me. They apply to you too. So if you need a little reminder, feel free to check out these cards on DareBowBeliever.com. Shameless plug. I have struggled with this exact same thing much like you. So if we're just being completely honest, I was insecure about my talents and I still struggle to share my words with anyone outside of myself in my journal. Just being honest, it's just the truth. It is nothing but an act of God and God's strength that enabled me to share my latest book on um, just a journey of, of loss, a, a journey of grief, <laughs> honestly, a journey of finding hope through Christ Jesus, and um, most of all, just a journey of finding what it means to have faith. Um, it's only the strength of God in the Holy Spirit that enabled me to be able to walk fully in my gifts as a writer, as a poet, um, and to have the courage to share it. <laughs> it's, it literally is only the strength of God, and I will tell you, there are days where it's hard and a struggle and I, you know I don't want to necessarily talk about the book or I don't necessarily want people to buy the book because there's moments where I'm like well what if they're disappointed what if it's not what they expected what if they don't think I'm a good writer I have those moments just like you and you know what I have to do bind them up rebuke them cast them down in the name of Jesus because I know that is not who my God is calling me to be. I know that is not who I am in the name of Christ Jesus. Like, I, I have to know who God is and who my identity is in him so that I can know when I'm getting thoughts that are contrary to what his, his word says. I have to choose every day to take every thought captive. And so do you. If you want to start to walk in your full potential, if you want to start to walk in who God called and created you to be, then you have to recognize when the thoughts that you are having do not align with the word of God and what he says about you. But until you know those words, it is hard to take those thoughts captive. So as I usually say, but not often enough, that is what Darebo Believer is all about. It's about helping you to be a bold believer of Christ. With my understanding as a busy wife, mom, and a woman who works full-time and also in ministry, that you probably don't have a bunch of extra time to sit around studying the word. Like, yes, you want to have your devotion time, but sometimes you, you can't. Like, sometimes it's not physically possible. And I understand being in that place. I've been in that place. So that is what Dare Believer is all about, giving you actionable tools right that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis like stickers like bookmarks like um cards that you can carry with you or you can put in places that you can see them often like a book that's small and you can fit in your bag and be reminded of the word of god because 
every poem has a scripture on the back because it was really important to me to not just share with you an experience or what it looks like to have a journey to redemption, but for you to also be reminded about all of God's beautiful promises because there is nothing more powerful I can say that than this book like this is the most powerful thing i could ever share with anybody <laughs> let me just keep it a hundred percent honest with you the word of god is the most powerful thing i could ever share with you um and so that is why there is a scripture on the back of every single poem and so if you need reminders like i said before make sure you check out darebowbeliever.com one of the things that has surely helped me accelerate in my journey to walking in my full potential has been being surrounded by beautiful, amazing, anointed um, women of God. And being a part of Bible Beauty Co. as the co-founder, which I don't think I say quite often enough, of Bible Beauty Co., I reap the benefits of being there just as much as the other women who are a part of the community. Quiet as is kept, I look forward to the discussions just like <laughs> our members do. I look forward to our time together just like our members do. I'm so grateful to be able to do faith, to do life with them. And if you are struggling in your faith walk, if you are struggling to feel supported, if you're struggling to feel encouraged, if you're struggling to even walk in your identity, I would encourage you to surround yourself with a bold, right? And a biblically sound, biblically sound, because that's important. They need to be speaking from the word, right? Because that's the only life-giving thing we got. That's the truth we got is the word of God. Surround yourself with a group of women who are, who are bold believers of Christ. Find you a Christian sisterhood of women who will exemplify what it looks like to live out your faith because it's more about just reading the words on the paper. We actually have to live them. If we don't live them out, it, it doesn't serve any purpose. You won't see the fullness of God if you are simply reading this word and not applying it to your life. And I cannot say that enough. So if you are looking for a sisterhood, please consider joining the Bible BD Co. Sisterhood. It is on Patreon. Having a group of women who believe, who have strong faith, who you can borrow faith from, because child, I've had to borrow faith from them a lot of times. Who, who will pray for you? Who will pray with you? Who will study the word with you? Who will talk to you and answer questions that you have about the word? Who will, you know, engage with you in a way that speaks to where you are right now is important. Jesus came to set each and every one of us free from everything that is trying to hold us captive. Everything that would keep or prevent us from walking fully in who God created us to be. And that's something that you just can't afford to lose sight of, whether you are a new believer or a longtime believer. It is so important to remember that it is not our own works that give us the grace of God. It is simply because of Jesus Christ dying on the cross that we are able to experience the gift of his grace. So your work is not making you worthy of his grace. So when you fall short, when you think about your past shortcomings, don't allow it to become chains. Remember that Jesus Christ broke every chain. He came to set you free. Three actionable tips that I want to leave you with today is that you need to make sure you know and believe who God says you are. Second one is that you need to make sure you spend some time prayer journaling. Spend that time thanking God for everything and all that he is. Spend some time confessing your sins, your shortcomings, the things that have held you captive. Spend some time writing those out. And then the last part of that is to spend time asking God to help you with those, to deliver you from those, to help you realize that your sins have already been blotted out. So the sooner you recognize that you've already been forgiven for those sins, the sooner you can move forward and start to walk in your full potential. The third tip that I want to leave you with today is to encourage you to surround yourself with a community of believers, a community of women who have a faith that you can borrow from when you're struggling, who will encourage you with the word of God when you are struggling, and who will love you with the love of Christ. We all face self-doubt, and so I really just want to encourage you today to know that you are not alone. You are not the first person to go through this, and you surely will not 
be the last. But I cannot say it enough times that Jesus Christ has already healed you. So all you have to do literally is stand up straight. Just stand up straight. Believe that you are healed and continue to strain forward towards the things that God has given you. I am having so much fun vlogging and sharing with you all a glimpse into my life. I'm trying to do it in the most authentic way possible in a timely manner, which has put me a little bit behind with editing lately, but hey, <laughs> um, it's all for the best. And I hope you are enjoying our vlogs. Um, so Friday was really jam packed for us, but I did make time to do some recording because we got chickens. So um, we got our chickens. Um, the young lady who was nice enough to sell us some young chickens because we didn't really want to start from scratch like the baby chicks because it's a lot um she was nice enough to drive them over to our home which saved me time since i was at work um and it also saved us from having to figure out how in the world are you supposed to transport a chicken because child i do not know um so it was fun to get the chicken <laughs> to be cleaned out but they're not supposed to be in the cage for that long it's okay no that's why i said i need to go on. i'm just taking my slow little time it's five of them are they girls or boys yeah they're all girls so i want the black one to make Richie is and he's really not a pup y'all I'm I'm convinced that he's more than a year old and so is my husband so I, I don't think he's really a pup but nonetheless he's wild and him and the chickens are doing kind of okay together um he he's a very busy dog high energy so um yeah leaving him outside for extended periods <laughs> with the chickens not such a good idea um I've, I've found him a few times messing with the nets of the chicken um coop so yeah but he's very high energy and so i hope you enjoy seeing some clips of him running around and being the wild little pup that he is proving to be i cooked um a quinoa bowl this day and it was probably the second or the third time i made quinoa for the family but it's the first time that mostly everybody liked it so that was like super exciting for me because i'm still trying to figure out what this whole quinoa thing is about i know it's healthy but as far as actually having it taste like something it's a bit of a struggle but we'll see <laughs> Thank you. 
we only were not even halfway done with the, building the chicken coop on Friday. So on Saturday, we had to go out in the rain <laughs> um, to finish getting the netting secured. So that was a great time. And I'm not talking to drizzle, y'all. It was pouring down. It was pouring down. Like, yes, it came down hard. And we just had to weather through. <laughs> I didn't get footage, of course, because I couldn't leave my camera sitting outside. But I did get a few clips of my husband as he was working on the coop before I came outside to start to help. But I hope you enjoyed the footage I did get. We um, have, for the most part, finished the coops. But y'all, these chickens love to get on top of the smaller coop that's inside of the larger coop. And so they just keep pooping all on the top of the poop. And so my husband's trying to get creative and figure out something to keep them from getting up there. But nothing has worked so far. So if you have chickens or you know anything about having chickens and you have any ideas on how to prevent this, we would love to hear them. Thank you.
my little Amazon haul. I got a lot of random things, mostly all of them that I needed, I would say. Um, I found a random video on like sustainable living um, and one of the things that she shared that she does and if I can remember her name then I will put it in the description box but she shared how she uses wool balls instead of using um, lint sheets in the dryer so I bought those um, so that when we run out of lint drying sheets I'm gonna just switch us to those and see how that goes I am all for saving money saving time um, and just kind of doing the best that I can to to make good choices for our family especially when it comes to things that i feel like are more natural anyways um and so to me i was like oh well yeah we, that's that's totally something that would make sense for us to use instead of using the typical thing that's full of chemicals so i'll let y'all know how that goes once we use it <laughs> trying like the store-bought cotton pads um, which were fine there were nothing wrong with them but it's still the same thing because you're throwing them in the trash at the end of the day so I'm gonna be giving the reusable pads a try if you were around on the channel for a long time you know that I cloth diaper our oldest child I would have done the youngest if I had still been staying at home but that was not the case <laughs> you but most of all I pray that it will help you to walk in the bold belief of Christ Jesus and most of all I pray that you will recognize your identity in Christ today if you enjoyed today's episode make sure you hit the thumbs up button and as always if you have not already make sure you share today's episode with one of your good good girlfriends who could use a word of encouragement until next time you guys be bold be blessed